This right here is my Lynx by Orion Blasters. And this right here is my dream come true. Hey, what's up good people? Welcome to another episode of Pwned. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the Taurus. The Taurus that I finally have in my hands. Yes. And in case you guys don't know, a little history for you. The Taurus is actually the predecessor of the Lynx Blaster that we all know and love. The super popular Lynx Blaster also made by Orion Blasters. And this, in my opinion, is the spiritual successor to what is known as the Multiple Orgasm by Make It Go. So what exactly is the Taurus and why have I been wanting to get my hands on one of these for such a long time? Well, a very simple description of it would be that this is a full-length Magwell bullpup style 3D printed blaster. That's really it. But if you look closer, the barrel and the plunger tube are in line. And then right here is the magwell. Unlike the Lynx here, that features a turnaround channel system right here where the air from the plunger is pushed out and it travels in a U shape going up and straight out into the barrel, pushing the dart out. So now once again, I'm going to say it, the barrel and the plunger tube are in line. And then this is a bullpup style blaster. When I first saw this, I was super intrigued by the system. I was like, what kind of sorcery is this? How is this even possible? So first of all, a huge shout out to Dan of Orion Blasters for even dreaming this up and creating this thing. This is just awesome. And if I'm not wrong, there are four of these in existence. One of which is in Captain Slug's hands. Another two of which are in Dan's own hands. And this I actually got from Kelly Industries. So Kelly Industries, Adrian, thank you man. Thank you so much for making my dream come true. I've always wanted a Taurus. I've tried so hard to ask Dan if there is any way that he will be able to sell me a Taurus but he was never confident enough with the system simply because he already made so much improvements to what we know today as the Lynx that I was like oh man I really want a Taurus and of course apart from the fact that I was so intrigued by this system and I really wanted to know how it worked at the point of time I was only interested in blasters that could handle both full length and half length darts that is why this was really my dream blaster of course I have to say that once I tried Snowy's Lynx then my entire world changed but then again, you know, it's still Dan of Orion Blasters. Dude, this is amazing. So before I give you guys a firing demonstration showing you the capability of this being able to handle full length and half length darts, I want to tell you guys some of the differences that this has basically gone through. I think I'm not phrasing that right. There are some things that have been changed since I received it in its original form and now it's been upgraded just a little bit. And the first piece that has been changed is this front piece over here. The original piece was in blue and this newer piece is in red. And the biggest difference, apart from the color, is that this has a wider slot, which allows you to kind of grip onto a scar barrel, for example, like this. In this particular use case scenario, it's gripping onto the scar barrel. The original piece had a slot that was slightly wider than 16 millimeters in diameter, so it would not be able to hold a scar barrel like this. Next, of course, just purely for cosmetics, I've put some indexing clips up here by LaRue. These are in red to kind of match that blue and red overall theme. Then I've changed out this front grip. In fact, wait, it did not come with a front grip. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I just put on this worker angled front grip here. Next, another visual thing. I put some kind of fabric tape here. It's slightly pink, it's slightly red. I just put some fabric tape here and I wrapped it with clear vinyl tape. So it's featured on both sides. This is just to kind of add a bit more color to this whole blaster. I wanted to go for this really like red and blue kind of thing. Then I also changed out these sleeves here. On the main rods, originally they were aluminum sleeves, I changed them to carbon fiber sleeves. Now they look black because it's a different type of carbon fiber, but they are carbon fiber. I just found these rods, cut them down to size and they fit perfectly because I think that, you know, a little bit of black goes well with the two grips on this blaster. And then moving back here, it's something that you won't be able to really see, but the plunger head as well as the turnaround piece, yes there is a turnaround piece, it's a magical turnaround piece, has also been changed to something that offers a slightly narrower inner diameter because you know I just wanted it to have a slightly, I don't even know why I'm saying that, it's just my preference. But yeah I changed that anyway and the dart pusher has also been changed to a newer version. Now I have to say that the improvements on the dart pusher and turnaround piece kind of makes me think that because the pusher and turnaround system in the links in particular with regards to the seal that it gets works really really well for the Lynx and so I'm not surprised if those improvements came from the Lynx and then it was translated back for the Taurus itself so really good job Dan good job oh there is one more thing and that is the trigger guard here now this piece okay there's a little bit of a cute story here so Adrian actually cracked his original trigger guard piece and then he ran out of the same filament to reprint it 
So, Dan helped him to reprint it and then used a newer version of this trigger guard. So now the slots here don't actually line up but they still fit and it serves its purpose so I'm not complaining there because it looks perfectly fine in my opinion. So apart from all these things that I just mentioned to you, everything else on this blaster was from the original print and I don't know how long ago this is but I gotta say it's been holding up really really well. There is some discoloration here and there but I feel that that gives it a lot of character because this is basically like kind of a legendary piece in my opinion like a unicorn piece. So because it's worn out and it clearly shows its age, I, I like it even more. I find that there's a really like a really strong allure to it and I, I like it a lot. Alright let's talk about Magwell here just a little bit. The Magwell is very much like the Lynx Magwell if you guys have seen one. Basically, this here is the mag release lever. You just pull it towards the back and then you can release your mag or remove your mag. This also has that kind of Vanguard style narrowness to it, uh, to the dart pusher I have to be precise. And what that means is that whether or not your blaster is in the primed or forward position, you're able to remove or insert a mag without any problems whatsoever. Moving forward to this trigger grip or the pistol grip over here, this is a separate grip piece altogether. It is not a printed piece. I don't know what this is called exactly. Some people call this the AR-15 grip. Some people call it like an AEG kind of grip, uh, whatever you want to call it. So I apologize for not knowing that terminology very well. But this is a separate piece altogether. It is held in by a single long bolt. And many people have said that blasters that feature this particular style of grip, it's very susceptible to it breaking and snapping off at this point. However, I put some thread locker and I think that the tension in here is not too tight, not too loose. So I don't see much of a wobble. But because I've upgraded the spring and now this thing features a SF25TC spring, whenever I prime the blaster, I make sure not to push forward with the trigger grip. I pull back with the priming grip and I'm applying pressure with my shoulder instead. So that's where the support is, right here and here. This is just for me to hold it upright just something that i wanted to share with you guys uh, it's a kind of like a trained behavior now that i've been using this blaster and just having fun with it overall so let's talk about that magical turnaround system and i gotta do this with the blaster here first to kind of give you guys a better idea of what i'm saying now the first piece i'll bring your attention to is this dart pusher now the one in here is a bit different i'll tell you guys a bit more about that in a while but this dart pusher actually sits kind of in this general area of the blaster so whenever you prime it it goes back whenever you push the priming bar forward it goes this way and it chambers the dart right here is the turnaround piece and it looks something like this 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 something like this all right so it's this really cool shaped thing so i'll tell you guys a bit more about this in a bit and then last but not least is another crucial part to this whole thing it is the plunger head that shall be represented by this piece over here and i like the fact that this is actually a symmetrical piece so it doesn't matter which side or which direction you install it in it's always going to be correct another crucial piece of information is that the plunger head itself has an o-ring nested on the inside of that slot over here that's because the barrel will be going through the plunger head just like that we got the orientation wrong my apologies guys it should be this way instead like that so plunger head moves along the barrel which also means that you have to have some lubrication on the barrel to make sure that this action is going to be really smooth so every once in a while you're going to have to remove your barrel just lubricate it a little bit and then it should give you number one a good seal number two good movement as well like a good smooth action now this part over here being the plunger head it interfaces with this, the turnaround piece. And the turnaround piece here has these groove-like designs. Now you notice that there is an O-ring on the side here and this O-ring is where your plunger tube goes around so that creates a seal. But on the back here, there is also an O-ring nested on the inside. This is the older version. The O-ring is nested here. So where the pusher comes into play, the pusher with no O-ring pushes the dart into this slot here and it seals via that O-ring. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, the barrel actually sits onto this slot right here all the time. And if you look carefully, it doesn't sit all the way in. There's a slight gap in between these areas and that is essentially your turnaround. So once the plunger head moves, it moves forward like that inside of the plunger tube and all the air gets compressed and pushed into these open slots here. It goes around and travels into the barrel. Hopefully you guys get what I'm trying to illustrate here because you know I don't animate stuff. If I could do a beautiful animation, I would for you guys but... <laughs> so if you look at it from the back, 
right there you guys can see that thing over there yeah that that support it's what's holding the barrel in place and then you see that clear part that's where the air will kind of move around this way so i'm just still calling this a turnaround piece and then your chambering piece will just chamber a dart in there that creates a seal dart sits right there there's a small gap between the dart pusher as well as the barrel and there's a small gap on the sides to allow the air to rush in and then lastly the o-ring on the plunger head here provides a seal to prevent air from leaking out from the barrel that's quite an intricate system if you ask me but i think it's magic so i want to quickly tell you guys about the improvements then from this particular version of the pusher and the turnaround piece to the new version now i'm not able to show it to you guys because i'm not going to disassemble this whole thing but like i said i believe it takes cue from the links and so the new version actually has an o-ring around the pusher itself and there will not be an o-ring on the back of the turnaround piece also there will be an o-ring here on the face of the turnaround piece and that acts as your plunger cushion so when you pull the trigger and you fire a dart your plunger head doesn't smash against the 3d print it smashes against that rubber o-ring instead and the last feature that the newer version has is that it has rifle sling attachment points now so there's two rings on the side here that allow you to attach your rifle sling if you want to and it looks just like that now to kind of show the new pusher like i don't know if you guys can really see it because of the lighting and everything but uh i'm just trying my best can you guys see the o-ring so it's a screw with an o-ring and you can adjust the tension of the screw to adjust the width of the o-ring now i'm going to give you guys a quick firing demonstration First, I must say that I've tested the FPS of this thing using a Silver Fox 25 TC spring. I'm getting about 170 to 180 FPS for full length darts. And those are either waffle tips or they are the AccuFake darts. So with different type of darts, you're going to get varying performances. But that I think is on the lower spectrum. So if you adjust this thing and tweak it to have a better seal, and if you use better darts with a better dart fit in a proper barrel, you're probably going to be able to hit 230 fps on average and i'm talking about like half length darts so first of all i've got a full length mag with five accufate darts in here and look the blaster is not in its primed position i can insert the mag i can remove the mag let me prime it to show you guys now the blaster is in the primed position Wait, hold on this came out so i can insert the mag i can remove the mag absolutely no problem whatsoever so here we go five darts and uh yeah because this thing is basically like the predecessor of the links this also has slam fire i'll show it to you guys in a bit so just sit tight all five darts let's go i just want to make sure that i'm in frame is that a misfire i'm not sure oh my dart got stuck in there let me just remove the dart sorry guys So what you guys just saw is a situation where the Taurus was just being iffy and being meh, right? I'm not going to retake that firing demonstration. I'm just going to leave this in the video so you get the full true experience of it. And that is also the reason why Dan kept telling me that the Taurus is iffy because there are a lot of, I guess, a lot of points about the Taurus that can be improved. It's just that he didn't really focus much attention to it because he started focusing on the Lynx instead. And rightfully so, the Lynx is an awesome blaster, don't get me wrong. So that is also why he has not made this blaster publicly available and I tip my hat off to him for that. Now what happened here was that the spring started to move out of place and I gotta tell you guys that the barrel is actually held in by just one point and that is the point right here. This front piece holds the barrel in place. If this doesn't grip the barrel tight enough, then when you keep firing, the barrel will eventually start to slip out and move forward and fall out. Now, once the barrel slips out and it gets dislodged from the back piece or the turnaround piece here, the chances of the spring actually moving and blocking that entrance or blocking the slot is very high. Now, in the case of this particular situation, because I'm using a SFTC25 spring, the overall diameter of the spring is just slightly wider than the barrel itself. So yeah, it's going to warp a little bit. The original spring that came with this thing was, if I'm not wrong, a K24 spring. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. But that has a much wider outer diameter so even if that spring shifts around the risk of it blocking the slot where the barrel goes in is very very low so i might consider swapping this spring out for one with a larger diameter so that will only come in due time 
And right now you guys are probably thinking like, then psych, why don't you just tighten this thing down even more or maybe consider making this slightly wider here so that when you tighten this down, it's gonna create a tighter grip. And that's because this whole piece here essentially, which is a clamp, is 3D printed. If you tighten it too much, it's going to crack somewhere. Something's gonna give. It's either gonna crack on the top or on the side. The original blue piece actually has a huge crack on the side here. And I think that that happened not because Kelly tightened it too much. I think that it cracked due to the differences in atmospheric conditions as it was transiting from him across different countries all the way to Singapore. So I'm not going to blame him for that, but at least you guys know that is something that might happen. Now let's carry on with the firing demonstration. I'm going to show you guys this blaster firing off half-length darts with the help of a Talon Mag converter. And it's going to go in right here. My order from NF Strike has finally arrived after I raised the dispute on PayPal. I don't know, just magically appeared a couple of weeks after I raised the dispute on PayPal. So I've got some of these newer, slightly angled or like banana style talent mags. And I've got five waffle head darts in there. And I've got a ton bumper over here, a TPU bumper that goes in right there. Now, let's fire this thing off and let's hope that the barrel doesn't shift out. Just for good measure, let me just make sure that this is tight. So the first two darts will be single shots and then the last three will be slam fire. Hopefully no issues this time. Here we go. Okay, that did not shift. That's good. Now just gonna hold down the trigger and pump this thing three times. Here we go. Slam fire for you. Everything works very well. This time, no dart jams. I don't know why I did that. Uh, I think it's just... I'm used to that motion of still pulling down on the mag release lever even though this is now just a friction fit due to the adapter in there. Let me just do that for you guys again. So yeah, all half-length darts fired out, no problem. Okay, so now that the firing demonstration is done, on hindsight, I think that one of the reasons why the barrel shifted up is because of the darts that I used. Now, if you use darts with slightly wider heads like this, it's definitely going to cause friction. So maybe when I was chambering it, the dart wasn't chambered properly and this being an AccuFake dart, I think maybe the dart tip actually snagged against the opening of the barrel right there. And so when I chambered that dart, I think it pushed the barrel forward instead. So all in all guys, I must say that this is a blaster that I personally really enjoy. I've been wanting this thing and I've always wanted to one, own this Taurus because it is a bullpup. Number two, because I thought that the system here, I still do think that the system here is some kind of sorcery. I think it works really well. So kudos to Dan on that once again. But I guess there are some flaws to this thing. There are some quirks to it that you really have to take note of. And one of the potential failure points is right here, this piece over here. This is the only piece that is holding the barrel in. And of course, you have to always make sure that your barrel is lubricated because that O-ring on the plunger head is always going to be shifting up and down the barrel all the time. Now, there are some cool features on this thing as well. For example, slam fire, you know, it's a bullpup and it's all in line. It is compatible with full-length mags as well. So honestly, in my opinion, there's a lot to love about this blaster, but also a lot to take note of and be mindful of whenever you're operating the blaster. So yeah, uh, you know, it's, nothing's really perfect, but I like it. I think it's a work of art. I think it's a work of genius. And I'm super, super glad that I have it in my hands. I will not be taking this out if ever I play in a game or at a war, because I think that it is not as reliable as some of the other blasters that I actually own. So that's one point. Another is because this thing is quite iffy. I don't want it to be breaking apart on me without me being able to kind of quickly fix it back or quickly rectify the situation. Next, of course, is because I don't have the files to this thing. So even if I want to reprint something, I think it's only out of due respect that I reach out to Dan and ask him or commission him to reprint a certain part and send it over to me. The bottom line is this to me is a grail piece. It's like a unicorn in my opinion, and it is a piece for collection. I am now a super proud owner of an elusive Taurus and I want to say thank you again to Kelly for passing this piece on to me. Don't get me wrong guys, I bought this from Kelly so he didn't give it to me but still if he didn't reach out to me I wouldn't have this in my hands anyway. Once again everyone this video is all about the Orion Blasters Taurus, the predecessor to the Lynx that we all know and love and the spiritual successor to the Multiple Orgasm by Make It Go. That is it. Thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout and watching this video from start to end. You know the deal. Jules pay the bills and teamwork makes the dream work. I will catch all of you in the next episode. Peace.